In the following lecture, we're going to talk about uh, Ka, which is also known as the acid dissociation constant. And this term usually applies for weak acids which are in equilibrium. And uh, K is uh, going to be used to denote or describe the strength of these weak acids. For example, I have ethanoic acid which is CH3, uh, C double OH which is the carboxylic group. And uh, what happens is that it reacts with water. And what do acids do? By definition, acids produce protons. They produce H plus one ions. So if you have ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid loses its H uh, plus ion, which is uh, the end one over here. If, if ever you have a carboxylic acid, it's always the COOH group, which loses its or produces H plus one ions and gives it to water, which results in the formation of CH3. If it loses its, its H plus one ion, this ion, uh, ethanoate ion would be produced and another ion, that H plus one would then go and uh, it would bond itself with water and an H3O plus ion would be produced in solution. Now remember in solutions when an acid produces an H plus one ion, it loses its H plus one ion, then that H plus one ion is not just simply roaming around in water. What happens is the water molecule in the solution uh, remember water has these lone pairs, so there are lone pairs present on the water molecules. These lone pairs are going to attract those H plus 1. So if there's an H plus 1 coming in, that H plus 1 ion is going to get attracted. It would end up forming a dative bond with that water molecule, which results in the formation of this H3O plus ion. So always remember that uh, uh, a lot of you might have studied that acids produce H plus 1 ions. Then uh, the, the fact is that if it's in, in a solution, then those H plus ions would not be just roaming around in aqueous state. What they would instead do is they would bind with water molecules and they would end up forming dative bonds with these lone pairs and this would result in the formation of H3O plus ions. So your solution is going to contain H3O plus or hydronium ions instead of the H plus 1 ions. And uh, this H3O plus and H plus 1 can be used interchangeably. Whenever, some, whenever uh, we talk about acids producing H plus 1 ions, what we can indirectly uh, infer from that is that acids produce H3O plus ions. So in a lot of uh, equations, H3O plus ions and H plus 1 ions are written interchangeably because uh, all the H plus 1 ions are going to combine with water to form this H3O plus ion. So I've written down this entire reaction for a weak acid. A uh, weak acid loses H plus 1 ions. Now, since it's a weak acid, what does the term weak acid mean? Weak acid means uh, that the acid is going to partially ionize and it's not going to produce a lot of H plus 1 ions or H3O plus ions in our case. Uh, so if ethanoic acid is a weak acid, almost all uh, carbon containing uh, organic acids, they are considered to be weak acids. They lose their H plus 1 ions. Uh, but not all of them. They're going to partially ionize, which means that if you have 100 molecules of uh, ethanoic acid, then only a few molecules are going to ionize. They're going to lose their H plus 1 ions, producing ethanoate ions and H3O plus 1 ions. So as a, as a result, in your solution, you have an equilibrium. You have uh, a few of the ethanoic acid molecules might be ionizing and they would be producing ethanoate ions and H3O plus ions. But uh, on the other hand, the reverse reaction might also kick in and some of those ethroid ions might be trying to gain those H plus 1 ions back to form ethroic acid back again. So as a result, your reaction would be at equilibrium and in your reaction or equilibrium mixture, you'll have the reactants, which in this case are my acid and water molecules and my products. They would both be present. So my reactants, denoting that by R, and my products would both be present in the equilibrium mixture and there would be a reversible reaction setup. So some of the ethanoic acid molecules might dissociate uh, and after some dissociation, a reversible reaction would be set up and once the rate of forward reaction and the rate of backward reaction is equal, that would indicate that the amount of ethanoic acid would remain constant because the amount that is dissociating, uh, the same amount would be recombining to form ethanoic acid back again. So the quantity of ethanoic acid at equilibrium would remain unchanged. The quantity of H3O plus ions would also remain unchanged because the reaction has now reached equilibrium. And whenever we have equilibrium reactions like this, the one that is shown over here, 
uh, whenever you have an equilibrium uh, set up, you always talk about equilibrium constants. And what is the equilibrium constant? Let me first rub this off. Equilibrium constant K for a reversible reaction is the ratio of the concentration of products divided by the ratio of the concentration of reactants. So for example, for this reaction over here, which is at equilibrium, the equilibrium constant is going to be, uh, if I write down the equilibrium constant, it's going to, it's going to be my products are ethanoetine CH3CO minus one. So it's uh, the concentration of CH3. Remember concentration are denoted by square brackets and the concentration of H3O plus one. So these are my, these are my products. And my reactant is going to be, my reactants are uh, ethanoic acid CH3C OH, double OH, and water. So this is going to be my uh, equilibrium constant expression, the concentration of products divided by the concentration of reactants. Now, one thing that needs to be uh, taken care of is that, uh, remember, this acid is in an aqueous solution. So it's, it's dissociating, it's in equilibrium in an aqueous solution. So whenever uh, uh, there is an aqueous solution, Aqueous means that there is a lot of water present. Water is going to be, a, because everything is dissolved in water. So uh, that means uh, water is in large excess. It's in a lot of excess. And when some reactant or product is in large excess, that means that its concentration almost becomes constant. Because if you have, for example, if you have uh, 200 moles of water, if, uh, if a few moles of water are produced or are consumed, the amount of water almost remains unchanged or unaffected. So we can state, uh, we can state that water has almost a constant concentration. And if water has a constant concentration, we don't write water in the expression, we take its concentration as one. So water is removed from the expression. And this equilibrium constant that we wrote down, which is the which is the ratio of the concentration of products divided by reactants. This equilibrium constant uh, constant because it's being applied to weak acids and it's it's about the dissociation. It's about the equilibrium in which weak acids are getting dissociated in a solution. We name this uh, equilibrium constant as Ka. So this is your Ka. It's uh, it's the equilibrium constant when it is applied to an acid dissociating in in an aqueous solution. So I'm going to do another example of a weak acid. This time I'm taking ammonium ion as a weak acid. Uh, it has an H plus one ion. It uh, produces an H plus one ion. It gives it to H2O and ends up forming NH3 and H3O plus one. So this is, this is a weak acid. It's dissociating. It's losing its H plus one, giving it to water. Water ends up forming H3O plus one. I'm going to write down and this, uh, uh, since it's a weak acid, it's going to be in equilibrium. Uh, forward reaction dissociation would be occurring at the same time, backward reverse reaction would also start. And at one point, uh, the rate of forward and the rate of backward would be in, uh, our, the rates are going to be equal. So the quantity of uh, reactant and the quantity of product would remain constant. So the equilibrium constant uh, or acid dissociation constant in this case, Ka, is going to be the concentration of products, which in this case are the concentration of NH3. And remember, this is all happening in aqueous state. It's an aqueous solution. The other product is H3O plus. And my reactants, which in this case are going to be NH4 plus one, which is my acid in this case. And the other uh, reactant is H2O. And as I have told you earlier, since everything is happening in aqueous state, water is in large excess. So we are not going to write water in the expression. The concentration of water is going to be taken as a constant. And we're not going to add that in the expression. So my expression for Ka acid dissociation constant is going to be the concentration of NH3 and H3O plus one, my products, uh, divided by the concentration of my reactant, which is NH4 plus one. Now, one other way of thinking about uh, this K is that K could be written as, uh, it could be written as Kc of this uh, dissociation multiplied by the concentration of water. This is going to be, give me the same expression. For example, uh, if I write down Kc for this particular reaction, it's, uh, it's a concentration of my products, which is NH3 into the concentration of uh, the other product, which is H3O plus. 
and divide that by the concentration of my reactants which are NH4 plus 1 and the concentration of H2O and I'm multiplying that by I'm multiplying that by H2O concentration so if I multiply it by the concentration of H2O the H2O term is going to get cancelled out and remember we're cancelling it out because it's in excess it's in large excess its concentration is almost constant so you can what you can do is you can think of uh, of K as being Kc multiplied Kc of the expression multiplied by the concentration of uh, water which basically ends up cancelling out uh, the water term and you don't add the water term in the expression this gives you the expression for Ka now I'm going to try and uh, write a more general expression for Ka I'm going to try and write uh, uh, and uh, write an equation for a very general acid uh, dissociation constant and that would be for example if I have a general acid and a general uh, representation of an acid can be an acid could be represented by HA uh, remember what an acid was an acid was anything that produces H plus 1 ion so there's an H plus 1 ions and there's something else attached to it it could be anything most of the acids uh, weak acids they have uh, different things attached to it for example uh, ethanoic acid had ethanoic ions uh, if you had NH4 plus 1 that we did over here uh, there was NH3 attached to it so every acid has uh, something attached to it so but the main thing is that they have H plus 1 ions and when you add them to water you mix them with water the acid dissociates and ends up giving its H plus 1 to water which becomes H3O plus and what's left is A minus 1 ion because the H plus 1 from the acid is gone so you're left with this uh, rest of the, uh, of the molecule that is the leftover part because the H plus 1 has been given to water so this is my general acid dissociation equation so my general expression for Ka is going to be it's going to be the concentration of uh, my products A minus 1 into H3O plus divided by the concentration of divided by the concentration of HA and remember we're not going to write water we've already removed water many times so I'm now directly jumping to I'm not going to add water water is in excess so its concentration is constant so this is my general expression for for an acid dissociation constant and what I can do is I can further simplify this expression uh, remember that when an acid dissociated produces one uh, ion whatever that ion would be and one H3O plus one for example if we if we go back and look at uh, our NH4 plus one dissociating or ionizing it was producing one molecule of NH3 and one H3O plus one or if we go back even further and look at our ethanoic acid dissociating you would notice that there was one ethanoic ion being produced and one H3O plus one ion produced so so whatever my products are going to be they're going to be produced in one ratio one so the one ion of this being produced whatever the acid one H3O plus one ion being produced so the quantity or the concentration of these two ions are going to be exactly the same in the solution so instead instead of writing uh, this multiplied by this I know that both of them have the same exact concentration so what I can instead do is I can just write H3O plus 1 concentration and square it because in effect it is getting squared uh, this concentration and the concentration of this ion they're going to be exactly the same they're going to be exactly the same then the value whatever the value it's going to be it's just getting squared for example if the concentration of H3O plus 1 is 1 into 10 to the minus 2 the concentration of A minus 1 is also going to be 1 into 10 to the minus 2 so it's going to be 1 into 10 to the minus 2 multiplied by 1 into 10 to the minus 2 it's, so in effect it's basically 1 into 10 to the minus 2 getting squared so I don't need to write A minus 1 in the expression I can simply what I can simply do is I can write H3O plus 1 and then square it and what does HA represent? HA represented uh, the acid the weak acid it represented the concentration of the weak acid so I can divide it by the so I can divide it by the concentration of my weak acid 
So here I have uh, written, finally written down the expression for K A dissociation constant, which is for any weak acid, it's simply the concentration of H T O plus one squared divided by the weak acid concentration. So this is the expression for K A. And remember, I also told you that H T O plus one. Uh, people use HCO plus one and H plus one interchangeably uh, because I told you that there is no such thing as H plus one in solution because H plus one combines with water to form HCO plus one. So whatever, whenever we talk about H plus one ions, it's we basically uh, in a solution we're talking about HCO plus one ions. But you, what you can write, uh, you you can uh, change HCO plus one and you can think of H, it of it as H plus one squared divided by acid concentration. So this expression is also frequently used. Both these expressions, they mean exactly the same thing. They represent the acid dissociation constant. And this acid dissociation constant is going to be used uh, to find, uh, uh, it has three components to it. One is the value of the dissociation constant, that could be found. And what would the value of dissociation constant mean? So if you have a very large value of K, that means that you're getting more products. It's uh, Remember, K was derived from the expression of the concentration of my products divided by the concentration of my reactant. So if the value is large, that means that my numerator has a bigger value. You have more H3O plus one ion, so which means that more forward reaction is happening and the acid is a strong acid. There's strong dissociation, more products are produced, so it's a, it's a strong acid. It denotes a strong acid. Vice versa. Small value of K would indicate weak dissociation. Less products would be formed, numerator would be small, there would be fewer H plus 1 or H3O plus 1 ions being formed. So the acid would not be dissociating a lot, so it's going to be a lot weaker acid. Remember, all weak acids, they, uh, we, I'm talking relatively speaking, so some weak acids would dissociate more compared to the uh, others. So that would be indicated by the value of K. Large K means more dissociation, small K means less dis less dissociation.